One. This story happened a couple of months ago. I work audit shift at a motel literally right off the highway. As in I can count traffic from our front parking lot. Audit shift, for those unaware, is the third night shift or overnight, where we run close of day software, prepare breakfast. I know not every place does this, but we do. And it gives a general idea of my duties. <laughs> duties. And generally, make sure there's at least one person on the property at all times. I'm literally the only employee here at night. My boss lives on the other side of the bay from the hotel. And our customer support line is about as well versed in the goings on of this hotel as an ant in an auto shop. Fortunately, I'm 6'2", Lorg, and generally don't fuck around. Not that I'm any great shakes in a fight, but I'm the kind of tall, fat that looks like bulk white dude that can bluff my way through almost any fight. So nobody ever tries getting physical, they just yell a lot and make stupid demands. You know the type. So some months back, I had taken off for a second shift, and settled into my evening routine of Reddit and YouTube, when I started getting noise complaints now. I almost never get noise complaints like this, it's just someone's dog while they're out shopping at the 24-hour grocery store across the street, or someone hard of hearing has their TV too loud, easy stuff to deal with. Not these little shits, nope. Around midnight, these teenagers start blasting music like they're trying to shake the entire western seaboard loose. So I march down the hall, already not happy that they're interrupting my Eureka Marathon. Knock on the door to tell them to turn it down. They give me the, yeah, yeah, we will. Bullshit, turn it down and close the door. I don't even get back to the staircase, three fucking doors away, before the music is turned back up. So I go back, pound on the door again, the fuck do you want? And I tell them, dude, at least give it long enough for me to get down the hallway before you turn it back up. Man, we didn't do nothing, blah, blah, blah. Whatever, just turn it the fuck down. Not an hour later, I'm getting more noise complaints, not to mention I can hear these guys fighting in the hallway, down the building, an entire floor away. They're on first, the front office is on second, so I shrek my Dillsbury Dobech ass back to their room and knock on the door. When one of them answers, I tell them, Alright, you guys have got to go, I'm giving you half an hour to pack your shit and leave before I have the cops escort you out. To which they explain that their mom is not here, and she's the one renting the room. Well, shit, I think. If they're all this bad, imagine the mom. I tell them either way, they have half an hour. They give me shit about, Man, you can't kick us out, oh, we're minors. Minors, you say? Interesting. So I decide to give them half an hour, read 20 minutes, and call the cops saying I might need help with an eviction. I explain that they're loud, refuse to leave, and there's a lot of fighting. Takes the boys in blue about five minutes to show up, at which point I happily lead them down to the room. Now they'd shown up with two squad cars, two cops each, and thank God, because one of them had the foresight to march around to the back of the hotel. By the time I got the cops to the room, the kids had bailed. Of course, they got about as far as a fart in a vacuum, thanks to the cops. Not ten minutes later, I see the entire entourage of like five kids being detained, not cuffed, or in the cars, but certainly not allowed to leave, by like six cops. More had shown up for the funsies, and a couple of them had the audacity, read it with someone else's turn with a community brain cell, to argue with the cops like they were yelling at me earlier. They hang around for about twenty, thirty minutes, waiting for the parent one of the cops explains to me that they weren't looking to press charges on a bunch of kids for being noisy and rude. Honestly, up to that point, that's all they really had been doing. I just wanted them out of the hotel and knew they weren't taking me seriously, so I didn't really care. Then one of the little shits comes into the lobby and goes, Did you really call the cops a nice man? Yeah, I did. Dude, we're all minors. Don't care. Man, you're a punk-ass bitch. Still don't care. About half an hour after the cops and the kids part ways, a woman comes up to the front desk, asking if I was the one who called the cops on their kids. Yes, I am. I am so sorry about them. Wait, what? Honestly, only two of them are mine. My daughter snuck her boyfriend in while I was out grocery shopping, and apparently he brought his friends, one of which has stolen a bottle of booze from the grocery store across the street. 
Honestly, she was super apologetic. Paid for the room proper, and I let her back in to collect their stuff. She was even super understanding when I told her, Look, I know it's not your fault, but this does mean I have to DNR, do not grant, going forward. It's no problem, I'm not planning on taking her to a hotel again anyway. Never did find out what happened to the group of kids responsible for shoplifting, underage drinking, public disturbance, and trespassing. If you tell someone to leave your hotel and they don't, as long as they haven't been there more than 15 days, governor's eviction moratorium, you can have them hauled off for trespassing. But I do hope the kids got help, and feel really bad for the mom. 2. It was that quiet time after the auditor's run. The bar is closed and all the guests are supposed to be tucked away in their beds. It was a quiet night. I want to say about 30% occupancy. And I am puttering away at my paperwork, glancing up to the cameras occasionally, as is my habit. That's when I see him. I look up, and staring directly into the camera is a ghastly apparition. A pale and gaunt figure with skin hanging off its bones, and a hollow, vacant expression. I gasp in alarm. The figure shifts and moves, and I realize three things in quick succession. One, it was not staring directly into the camera. Its lifeless gaze was merely sweeping across it at that precise moment. Two, it was not in fact a ghost, but an elderly man. Three, he was completely naked. He's near the vending machines and moving towards them, so I pray he's just looking for a late night snack. If he goes back to his room, it's not my problem. He stares at the snack machine for a bit, turns and shuffles down the hall. Okay. We didn't have what he was looking for, and he's going back to bed. Or maybe he realized he didn't have a wallet. Or crap, he's not holding a room key. Maybe he propped a door open. Not a matter of foresight if he forgot his wallet and pants, but maybe he's just a freaky old exhibitionist. He walks up to a room, and though I can't see the numbers, I've gotten to know the property well enough to know exactly which room it is, 312. So I pull it up, and there are two adult occupants, one male, one female. Okay, his partner will let him back in. He stares at the door, then turns back to face me and walks over to 310. Okay, he had the wrong room. It can happen. I pull it up to two adult occupants, two males. Okay, his partner or just a very progressive buddy will let him in. He stares at this door too. Then begins wandering down the hall, and his trajectory is such that he runs into the wall and just kind of drags along it as he walks. Oh boy. I take a quick look, and those are the only rooms occupied on the third floor. I grab a robe and my keys and head to the elevator. Catch him as he's slowly knocking on 316's door. Hello, sir. I saw you on camera and you looked a bit cold. Would you like a robe? He turns and his eyes don't focus on me. I've worked nights in bars enough to recognize he's not drunk and it's either drugs or mental illness. He just stares at me for a moment as I'm holding the terry cloth out in front of me, as to block my view of his lower half. Eventually, he takes it and pulls it on but fumbles and gives up with the belt, choosing to just let it hang open. Did you get locked out of your room, sir? I ask. Yeah. No worries, sir, it happens. We'll get you sorted. What's your room number? He gestures to the door he's knocking on, that I know is vacant. I think you have the wrong room, sir. There's nobody in there. That's why they're not answering. What's your name? He just stares at me and then fumbles with his belt. I ask again, and he looks back at me helplessly. He's beginning to look scared. It's okay, sir. I'll help you find your room. Can you follow me? He shuffles at a snail's pace, but does follow. Inwardly, I'm frantically running through all my options, trying to figure out how I'm going to verify which room is his. If the other occupants don't answer the door, and I can't verify who he is, I can't let him into a room. Heck, in his state, he shouldn't be alone anywhere. Am I going to have to babysit this guy all night with him half-naked in the lobby? Do I call somebody for this? Paramedics? Please? We get to 312. It's a 50-50 gamble, but it's closer, and he came here first. I knock on the door loud enough that hopefully the occupant inside won't be able to sleep through it and call out that his guest services. 
There's a pause that feels like eternity. I glance back at the old man who was staring off into space again. Then the creaky voice of an old woman answers, One minute. There's the sound of movement and then the door opens. An elderly woman blinks at me sleepily. The age is close, maybe I've lucked out. I open my mouth and realize that I hadn't thought of what I could say at this moment. I feel the gears of my brain shudder to a halt and my mouth takes its cue to take over without a filter. Gesturing to him like an awkward model on the prices right, I blab out, Does this man belong to you? She looks at me. She looks at him. God damn it, Henry, did you forget to take your meds again? The man beside me looks sheepish as she drags him into the room by his robe. Thank you, dear. I'll take it from here. And she shuts the door. I never saw them again. It was my last shift before my weekend. They apparently came down for a late breakfast and checked out right on time and were no comments or notes about them other than that the robe was not returned. The GM gave me a talking to about that and how those things aren't free. I asked if he would have preferred a naked man wandering aimlessly through the hotel and he said no. Well, I sure as hell wasn't going to ask for it back. 3. So a couple years ago, on a stormy night, I came in for third shift. Second shift passed along basic notes per usual. They then pulled out the reg card for a specific guest. Oh, I just checked this lady in not too long ago. Her power went out because of the storm, and she needed to get a hotel room. She was very nice. I don't think you'll have any problems. So I'm trying to put together why my coworker would mention the specific guest and assure me that there would be no problems. Immediately makes me think this lady is going to be a problem. But against my better judgment, I just don't ask. Coworker goes home, and I begin my nightly duties. About an hour later, I get a call from the lady my coworker had warned me about. We'll call her Mabel. Front desk. I can help you. I think I'm going to check out now. I just needed some place to take my shots. The power at home was out, and I can't take my shots in the dark. Can you come help me get my belongings onto the luggage cart? Of course, I'll grab the cart and be down to your room in just a moment. So at this point, I'm very curious what kind of shots this lady needed a whole hotel room for. Our whole building has power, so she could have just come by and asked to use the restroom. Really, I was just praying she didn't leave needles all over the room. Which, yes, people have done before. I got the luggage cart, wheeled it down the hall to her room, I knock, and this little old lady answers the door. I get the cart into her room and we start loading up the few items she has. She starts mumbling about all sorts of things, so I'll just pick up where things started to get interesting. And my husband passed away eight months ago. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Me too, it's terrible being alone. She just gave off the vibe of a bitter old woman that was mad at the world because life is pain. At this point, I feel really bad for her, but at the time, I was a socially awkward 18-year-old who just started working third, had no idea how to respond. Then she starts taking off her clothes. All her clothes. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. I'll go wait for you in the hallway. No, I'm not ready to go yet. Besides, it's nothing you haven't seen before. At that point, I'm still not looking, but I totally froze. This old lady is butt-ass naked, hobbling around the room going, Panties, panties, where did I put my panties? Her boobs literally hung down to her belly button. It was the most disturbing sight I had ever seen at that point in my life. I'll never be able to get that image out of my head. I had no idea what to do. I was so uncomfortable, but didn't want her to yell at me for leaving. Because in my mind, being yelled at was scarier than being in a hotel room with a random naked old lady. Plus, she was very elderly, her back was terribly hunched over, and she was literally shaking. I was honestly scared she was going to fall over and I'd have to call an ambulance. Again, keep in mind I was an 18-year-old kid fresh out of high school, with severe social anxiety. Nowadays, I would have handled the situation totally differently, and been out of that room the second her pants hit the floor. No questions asked. But alas, our story continues. She starts putting a different set of clothes on, and I notice all of her clothes, including her coat, are soaking wet. It was raining terribly outside, but she had driven to the hotel, and had been there for a few hours. 
Plus, it was 80 degrees outside, so I couldn't understand why she was wearing such a heavy coat. And why her shirt underneath the coat was soaking wet. Irrelevant, but this detail of the story always bothered me for some reason. We pack everything up and start heading towards the lobby. Mabel starts getting on my case about getting a refund, since she wasn't going to be staying the night. At this point, I was so freaked out by her and just wanted her gone, so I gave her her money back and helped her load her things into her car. As she was backing out, she whipped out of her spot so quick, she was literally millimeters from smashing into one of the giant pillars out front, and she hit the curb turning out of the lot. I immediately called my GM because I was shaken up really badly by the whole thing. And she told me it was 100% okay that I gave her a refund and she understood why I did it. We ended up putting her on the DNR list. A couple days later, I'm telling the story to another co-worker and it turns out she knew who Mabel was. My co-worker used to work as a receptionist at an independent doctor's office. And Mabel used to come in all the time and ask specifically to talk to the doctor who owned the practice. Just to come say hi, I guess. But every time she went, she would only talk through her hand puppets. I guess she was quirky when she was younger. But really went off the deep end after her husband died. So kind of a sad ending to this insane story and... Sad to report that this naked lady was my first of many working in the hotel industry. 4. Almost four months ago, the city that I live in went through one of its very short freezes that shut down the entire city. I live in Texas, and the infrastructure in my area could never handle any cold weather below 40 degrees, it seems. Therefore, people were staying in hotels because they didn't want to brave the ice that night, or their power went out, etc. Needless to say, our smallish town was sold out. I had permission for my GM to book myself a room for the night, in case I couldn't get home that morning. Then I would have a room that I can use until the roads cleared up a bit. I was working night audit for that night and I had checked in all but one of my guests who came in very late. When he arrived, I checked him in, and I may have forgotten to verify his room type and details as it was late, and I really just wanted everyone to go upstairs and leave me alone. But we had his reservation in our single king bed. I gave him his room key and he left to go unload. He then came back inside with three kids and his wife and all of their luggage. I've had guests with kids book the single king and have had kids sleep on the sofa or on the floor, so I didn't think too much about it. After five minutes, he came downstairs and asked me, Why did you put me in a room with one bed? I booked a room with two beds. I responded politely after looking into the reservation. Well, sir, it looks like the reservation was booked through a third party. Did you speak with anyone here at the hotel about your room type? I didn't book my room through a third party. I contacted Sleepy Poopers Hotels. And don't you work for them? I understand, sir. We are a part of Sleepy Poopers. But it's showing that the reservation came from a third party site. Unfortunately, I'm sold out of the rooms with the two queen beds. In fact, I have no other room to put you in as all my other guests have arrived and checked in. I have forgotten about my room at this point, I just kept reminding myself that I only had one more check arrival without actually checking. Then you're going to kick someone out then, and give me their room. Unfortunately, I can't do that. I do not know what else to say because it was such a wild request. It was at this point that he came around the desk, we have one of those open desks that anyone can walk behind, and he got right up on me. He said, I want to speak to your manager. Mind you, this was late in the night, around 1.30am or so. Sir, I can't do that either, it's too late to call them. And just so you know, the hotel is not taking payment from you for your room. We are taking it from the site you booked through, and if you have any complaints about your reservation, you would need to make it to them, because unfortunately my hands are tied. Get me your manager, I did not book with a third party, I booked with sleepy poopers. I'm sorry, but I can't do that. You're going to call your fucking manager because I am the customer. At this point, his two young daughters came downstairs with him. They had to be around six or seven, and the other even younger. At this point, I'm losing my patience because this guy is in my face without wearing a mask, making demands for me, and being completely disrespectful. So I let him know that you're yelling at the wrong people. We did not make this reservation for you. 
it was through a third party. Those are the people you need to call to see about getting moved to another hotel that can accommodate your needs. At least, that is what I attempted to say. But he cut me off right after the you are yelling at the wrong people with Call you fucking manager, you prick. To add insult to injury, he then turned to his girls and said, I'm sorry I scared you. So clearly he was trying to intimidate me to get what he wanted. Once I realized that, I let him know that he is no longer welcome to stay at the hotel, that he has ten minutes to pack his belongings and go, otherwise I would be calling the authorities. He was actually glad that I was going to call the police. This man thought that he was so in the right that the police would have his side. That's not how the police work. So he just goes off to sit down in the lobby and wait for the police to arrive. So I take my cordless phone and head to the back office, which I locked behind me and dialed the non-emergency line. The police came out about a few minutes later, so I went back out to the front desk. One of the officers asked me what was happening, so I explained to him that the guest is upset because he believed that he was getting a room with two beds. But the reservation was actually for a room with one bed. I said that I completely understand why he's frustrated, but he still got in my face and I felt like he was trying to intimidate me into giving him something that I simply didn't have. Another officer was talking with him, and I overhear him saying things like how I am not being helpful and that we screwed up his reservation and stuff like that. After talking with me, my officer went to go talk to his other officer, only to come back to me and tell me that he can't kick the guy out, that he has a lease of sorts. I politely explain that we are a private business and not a place of residency. If we refuse service, we can have them removed and trespassed, and that I don't feel safe with him being here. I mean, what if I was able to get him a double and something goes wrong? I have no idea how this guy is going to respond, but I do know that he has a way of getting aggressive. It was at this point that I overhear the guy saying, I'm having a problem and that douchebag isn't trying to help. Finally, the third officer, who has just been watching this entire time, asks me, Do you want him out of here? Absolutely, I have no idea what this guy could do. So the officer takes the other two officers over to this guy, and explain that he's no longer welcome on this property that he has five minutes to leave and that they will escort him out. The guy asked if he could go to his room to get his things and the police escorted him up to the room. When he got back, the guy asks if at least his family could stay. As long as you're not inside at all, then they can stay. I mean, I haven't had any run-ins with his family, he is the only one who had been acting up. So this guy is escorted off the property and as he's passing the desk he tells me, It's your job, buddy. This guy was so entitled that he thought he could get me fired from my job over his tantrum. A week later, my manager told me that he had called to talk about the incident. My manager chewed the guy out over the phone when he said to her, I don't understand how people can get offended at the F word. Her reply was, Well, sir, it's not the word. It's the fact that you were in his face screaming at him. He had every right to have you removed from the property. And if you don't think that your behavior was outrageous... Then I have the video and I'll be happy to send it to you so you can take a look at it yourself. Either way, you're no longer welcome back here. Apparently the guy hung up on her. But I still have my job. That guy failed to get me fired. I just felt so badly for his daughters having to watch all of that happen. They saw the police escort their dad out of the hotel. But man was it sweet knowing that my town was sold out of rooms and he had to sleep in his car in the snow and ice. 5. So I've been working front desk for a long enough time to be somewhat experienced at this point. When you get to a certain level, you expect to be able to predict how guests are going to react to things. Not this time. So this took place over Easter weekend. I work the morning shift at a fairly well-known chain hotel. Fairly middle ground in terms of general fanciness. We got a lot of families and also trade workers, as the city I'm working in is really growing quite fast. This particular guest has brought his wife and three kids for a stay in one of our family suites. Now, since I'm the full-time morning person, I get to know most of the guests pretty well. If anyone needs things during the day, or if anyone wants to make a reservation, I'm their girl. I had interacted with Mr. Redacted and his family a few times, 
let them into our pool, brought them extra towels, filled our water bottles for them. You know, customer service things. I try to be pretty positive most of the time, so I know I was always very accommodating and welcoming. And this particular gentleman has always been relatively pleasant to talk to. Cut to the chase. About 45 minutes past checkout time, I see G and his family in the lobby, chatting with some other guests who were on their way out. He was supposed to be checking out today, and I didn't have a late checkout note from the other shifts, and he certainly hadn't cleared it with me. I was sure to gently remind him of this, just a little lean over the counter and a smile with, Hello, sir. I just want to clarify that you guys are leaving today. It's a little after checkout here, but if you'd like to stay, I can extend you. Yeah, we're leaving. I have a late checkout. I didn't have anything on that, but he was already late, and my philosophy is that guests are less likely to be pricks about leaving if you're not as pushy as you want to be. Besides this, 12 was coming up. For context, due to COVID and the strain in our housekeeping department, we do not offer checkouts later than noon except for in very rare and specific circumstances. I figured that if he had been offered a late checkout that he knew to be out by noon. I wish I had known. About half an hour goes by and I still haven't seen him come down for a bell cart. At this point we're running up on 12.30 and that room is supposed to be an arrival. Housekeeping is nipping at my heels to get into that room as it is larger and requires a considerable amount of time to clean. I call up to his room and get G on the phone. Hello, Mr. G. I was wondering if you needed a bell cart up to your room. No, it's okay. We're just getting our things together. All right, sir. I should let you know that we do charge a late checkout fee for anyone after 1 p.m. Seriously? That sounds ridiculous. It is our policy, sir. Okay, fine. I guess we'll be out by 1. Predictably, he is not. About a quarter hour after, I still have not seen him come through the lobby to collect a bell cart. I grit my teeth and call up to his room again. Hello again, Mr. G. I'm very sorry to rush you, but we do need you out of that room so that housekeeping can get in there to clean it. They check if it's me. Yes, sir. Well, you know what? You're really starting to piss me off. I didn't even respond because I was busy opening and closing my mouth like a fish. The sheer speed with which he has switched from nice to absolutely fuming had left me with a neck injury. Unheeding of my shocked silence, the man continued. I had to late check out. Now you're going to call us five times in an hour, harass me, and threaten us with a charge if we don't get out? I demand to speak to the manager. Now at this point, there was no manager here. Being that it's Easter Monday, I am afraid there is no manager on the property, sir. She's off as it is a holiday. I'll get a supervisor then. There is no supervisor here. Well, when are they in? Tomorrow, sir. Well, that's ridiculous. Who's in charge when they're not here then? That would be me, sir. I'll admit this line felt the same as snorting a tablespoon of cocaine off Kurt Cobain's ass. I was flying high. Well, that's just not acceptable. Call her. No, sir. I will not be disturbing either my manager or my supervisor on their hard-earned days off for this. If you would like, I can give you her card when you come down to the desk to check out. And what you're going to do is take my cell phone number on file there and send it to your manager. Have her call me. I'm still astonished. I will also not be doing that, sir. Well, I'm taking this as far up as possible. Now at this point, I'm just getting tired of this insane back and forth. I tell him to go for it, and he hangs up. They ended up not leaving the property until almost 2.30. The best part is they left a massively entertaining review online, in which they insisted that I was the type of person to talk behind guests' backs, denied them water, kicked them out of the room after telling them they could stay, and insulted them. Needless to say, my GM knew it was a load of BS. She left a very kind response, telling him politely to fuck off. I know that this is pretty run-of-the-mill stuff for a front desk worker, but I have never witnessed somebody change tones so fast in their life. That was parkour of the highest caliber. Not to mention the emails that my GM continued to receive for three weeks after they had left, demanding that I be fired.
Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Kowahu, number 66. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. If you enjoyed the video, then please do click the like button and leave a comment, and it's also very helpful to me if you share the video around to your friends, family, and your dog groomer named Phil. But only if he's named Phil. Unless you're feeling rebellious. Go on, you know you want to. All right, let's see, where are we? Currently 7.10 p.m. on a Thursday evening. Uh, bu -bu 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 busy night ahead of me. I'll have to find time to fit a bath in. So I'm hoping to get this video up by 8 o'clock, which means, logically, it's going to be 9. Which is not too bad, but I was hoping to have it up by 5 today. Ha! <laughs> okay. But my schedule's a little disrupted. I'm, I'm kind of leaving it that way right now. I'm getting up way earlier than I should. But usually, the way it goes is, the days I'm recording are also happen to be the days when I'm getting treatment for my psoriasis at the hospital, which is fine. But I generally walk home because it's healthier and the weather's not bad recently, so, you know, pop a cap on, enjoy the weather. Um, only downside of that is, by the time I walk home in the sun, I'm absolutely knackered, especially when I've been up for several hours already. So when my plan is usually to have a bath and spend the rest of the night recording... That usually means have a bath, vegetate on the sofa, go upstairs, plan to record, and then sleep. But not actually record. And then I end up getting it done the next day. I'll get it sorted eventually. Uh, I do have to be up early on Monday for my second COVID vaccine, so I should probably make sure I'm well rested for that. But uh, I don't know. Okay, ramble, ramble. I'm, I'm, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.